with creature feature horror based movies or movies which attempt to have more of a realistic feel and realistic take on the concept of an animal attack be it a shark crocodile bear personally i would love to see a hippo based horror film that may sound like a stupid thing to say but hippos are very underestimated when it comes to how deadly they are they are formidable creatures they are deadly creatures and i would love to see a creature feature hippo movie but that's a totally different tangent of course and this particular movie takes the route of trying to be as realistic as possible within the subgenre of a creature feature horror film because creature feature horror without getting into subgenres of subgenres is a very broad one you can have pretty much anything from Lake Placid or Jaws up to John Carpenter's The Thing within that same kind of category and although some people may argue that that is the way that I would categorize it though. They are movies which are in the horror genre, be it realistic or just pure fiction or science fiction even, but they centralize the whole concept of the film and it hinges very much so around the titular creature. And that for me is what makes it a creature feature. This movie goes more down the Lake Placid or Jaws route and some others too. The Ghost in the Darkness for instance, I would say is a fantastic realistic horror creature feature although technically is it really a horror film conventionally speaking probably not but it is a horrific film and it's very scary when you think of how realistic it was how many of the events actually happened and of course I have reviewed that movie it was one of the earliest reviews which I've actually done and I love seeing people who also love that movie comment on it as well but this movie goes more down that route the movie is based on a true story, which I love. Whenever you can have that element of truth to it, it always adds to the feel of a film. It adds to the dread, it adds to the suspense. Now, how much of it is real is a totally different thing. And to be honest, I haven't looked into that. I haven't researched it. Some things in some movies like Ghost in the Darkness, for instance, were very accurate to real life. Other things were totally fictionalized. In this movie, I have no doubt that there were some things like that as well, but the basic concept behind Blackfoot Trail, or Backwoods, as I've seen it sometimes called, I hate it when movies do that, by the way, when they have more than one title, especially when they're already undervalued films. But this movie is about a bear, and bear attacks, and a particular bear attack. And I love that. Bears are formidable creatures, this one in particular is a black bear. They are known for their ferocity, they're known for their anger, they're known for being very difficult to stop attacking you. With a grizzly, of course, you play dead and you've got a reasonable chance of it leaving you alone if it thinks that you're dead. It might still bite at you, so you could still die, but if it thinks you're dead, you've got a reasonable chance of it leaving you alone. With a black bear, it'll tear you up anyway even if it thinks you're already dead, because it doesn't care. You've got to get big, you've got to get loud, you've got to beat on that thing's face, kind of like with a shark attack. To some degree, they have that more emotionless feel to them. And although a black bear is nowhere near the size of a grizzly, they still have an incredible ability of killing people. It's a knack that comes naturally to them. And this movie plays on that concept, I would say very well, but with a caveat. It plays on that very well in certain scenes because this is a movie which knows exactly what it's got to work with as far as the whole true story thing goes and unfortunately there are certain true story and true story event films not just in horror but in general which they know very clearly from a directing point of view from a writing point of view from the whole production point of view that they're going to have to stretch the material for this moment in time in effect or one particular attack to justify an entire movie. Some movies justify the entire runtime. Something like a, a true disaster story, for instance, like about 9-11. You can justifiably have the whole movie set, for instance, with one person stuck somewhere, because that is what could have well happened, hours upon hours. Other films like this, it's basically a few minutes, which are the real import and the real savagery of the story, of the legend of the story sometimes, and the rest of the film can sometimes feel either a little bit too slow or, in worst case scenarios, just like straight up filler. And I'm not going to say that this movie doesn't have any filler. There are some occasions where you think 
Could they have tightened up the movie a little bit? Could they have maybe made it 10 or even 15 minutes shorter? Yeah, they probably could, to be honest. The rewatchability is hurt a little bit by the pacing of the film. But overall, there are certain things which I really liked about Blackfoot Trail and other things which I really did not like. But to be honest, the things which I really did not like weren't necessarily the fault of the people making the film. But I'll get into that more in a second. As far as the things that I did really like, I love the look of the film. It's set in a nice location in Canada. There are great shots, really nice cinematography. And for me personally, the cinematography worked really well hand in hand with the music of the film. The music isn't loud and in your face like it would sometimes be in a horror film or in a creature feature. It's more like an ambient kind of music. It has more of a softness to it. And it's the kind of music which you typically expect to be in the background of something like a shot looking through the leaves of trees at sunlight coming through. That's the kind of visuals that this movie has. That's the kind of soundtrack that it has. And I like that. It's nice to have that in a film, to have something which doesn't necessarily have to look super dark and super dreary all the time. Because, of course, in the real situation, these people didn't know what they were getting into, this couple. And speaking of the couple, that was one of the things which I didn't necessarily love as much. I don't dislike either of the actors, but the chemistry between this guy and girl didn't necessarily feel that realistic all of the time. There are some things which, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but they didn't feel like they had great chemistry. Sometimes they did, sometimes they really didn't. And it wasn't just like a, an argument-based thing, it was just a lack of chemistry for me. It wasn't awful, I've definitely seen worse, it was certainly more than good enough for the film. But there were a couple of moments. With that thing being said, there was one other thing in particular about this film which I really did not like. In fact, I would say that I straight up hated it, and it served no purpose in the plot whatsoever. And that's kind of a spoiler to say that, if by spoiler you mean telling you something that's not going to happen. But I'm going to say it anyway, because a character shows up, a side character, who serves no purpose other than to antagonise the situation. And I hated this side character. It's the kind of side character who, if I met them in the situation that this couple was in, and I was being confronted in the way that this character does in the film, and being antagonised, it may not necessarily be the correct response. Well, it's not the correct response, but I don't think that guy would be leaving the forest. I think I'd probably bury him there because he pushes it way too far and he's asking for it. And that's probably a flaw on my part, but yeah, I'd probably just kill the guy, to be honest. But that character in the film, I did not like at all. He served no purpose, as I said, and that was a scene everything involved in this character to be honest and it's not that long thankfully about five ten minutes that just felt totally unnecessary drama now maybe in real life this character showed up but i would not be at all surprised if in the real events this character didn't even exist that would not surprise me at all because he just felt almost cartoonish in how ridiculous this character was but maybe that's just me. I'm sure some other people will enjoy the antagonizing of the scene, but for me, that gets to me in films, and not in a good way, that just annoys me. But as far as the overall flow of the film, the bear attack or attacks, those were the things which I liked more. As I said, I enjoyed the visual style of the film very much. The scenery is naturally a great look for the film to have. And as far as the bear attack scenes go, I rewound them a couple of times and even freeze framed certain moments so that I could fully appreciate the craftsmanship of the practical effects. The makeup in particular is superb and you really do have to pause it. If you're the kind of person who loves gore, you really need to pause those moments to appreciate it because they're very quick, they're very fleeting. The movie does not advertise the gore and parade it around as some movies would like Saw or Hostel. Not that that's a bad thing, it's just a different style of film. But this film takes the much more savage approach. There are certain scenes, for instance, of tension where there is no music. And I love that. 
in things that I've made, such as short films in the past, I love to use silence as being something that can be as powerful as music. And this movie does that as well. And that was great to see. I really enjoyed that aspect of the film. Now, overall, I would say that this is a movie which doesn't necessarily have the greatest rewatchability. Not because it wasn't enjoyable or interesting, not necessarily enjoyable, but interesting to say the least, but because the pacing of the film, the fact that once you've seen it once, you know what does and doesn't happen, that hurts the rewatchability a little bit because of the fact that you're kind of watching it as almost a documentary from that kind of point of view. Not really, but you know what I mean. Those kind of movies don't necessarily have the kind of entertainment and rewatchability factor that a straight up fictional story can have because you can take much more liberties with a fictional story whereas with one which is claiming to be more realistic as this one is you kind of handcuff yourself which isn't a bad thing but it does present limitations there that a fictional story just isn't going to have now with all of that being said what kind of scores am i going to give to this movie well first up as always, we have the story and the plot. And for the story and plot of this one, I'm going to give it a 6. And that's a fairly common score for me with horror films. And the reason why is because many horror films to me take a very similar approach to storytelling. They don't necessarily go wildly outside the box. And sometimes when they do, it doesn't turn out that well. This one is a little bit outside the box, going down more of a realistic, more of a savage, more of a brutal and less forgiving, less sugar-coated route. And I love that. But at the same time, the pacing is a little slow. As I said earlier on, I do believe genuinely that this film could have easily been 10 or 15 minutes shorter if you just cut out some of the conversation and walking time. Because you could say, yeah, but that's character development. To some degree, yeah. But at the same time, you're spending literally the entire film with these two people. So losing 10 or 15 minutes isn't going to hurt the development that much especially when you have an inciting situation to bring them together. So, of course, you could easily cut out some time and still have a great relationship there, potentially. So as far as the story, I'm going to give it a 6. It could have been tightened up for me, but there you go. As far as the characters, the casting, the way they're played, I'm going to give the film a 6 again, because... As I said, I didn't completely buy the chemistry. I liked it for the most part, but not completely. I hated the side character, and to me the side character is the biggest and baddest thing about the film in terms of downsides, but it doesn't hurt it too much. I can forgive that because of how good the other two characters, the main characters are, the rest of the time. I did like that. They make some decisions which aren't the best, some which are better than a typical horror character might make, so overall it kind of balances out, so I'm giving it a 6. And to be honest, part of that score of a 6 is due to how much time and how much of the film's weight is on the shoulders of just two people, really. And I value that. When a film uses less and less people to tell a story, then I value that. Not just based on a small location, which of course I've said before I love films that take place in enclosed spaces, but when you have a story based around just a couple of people doing their best rather than a whole cast of people. I appreciate that. As far as the visuals, special effects and makeup goes, well as I said I absolutely loved some of the makeup effects. They're pretty great and pretty gruesome as well to be honest but in a great way and I'm going to give it a 7 overall for that because although there are certain moments as I said which are fantastic in terms of gore and the scenes which you would want to pause and check out and appreciate the effects. They're very few and far between. Very, very few and far between. And it's not necessarily just with the bear. There are a couple of others as well, but it's not really played up as much as it could have been. And as morbid as it sounds, I would have liked to have seen more of the effects. Not in terms of being through the film more, but the moments taken to be a little bit longer. Because, of course, with a movie like this, it's not as much about glorifying the gore as a typical horror film would be. It's more about just reciting the savagery of a moment. So, of course, they have restraint in that, and I can appreciate that. But as a gore fan, the, that natural part of me just wants to see more of it. So, overall, I'm giving it a 7. It was great. A little bit more of it would have been nice, and that would have given it an even higher score. And even if it wasn't more in terms of time, just getting more on camera 
rather than shaking the camera as it was done a little bit would have bumped up the score easily to an 8, maybe even higher. As far as the audio of the film, the soundtrack, audio effects, all that kind of stuff, I'm going to give it an 8 because I really enjoyed the music. The sound effects, well, they're not bad, but they're not necessarily that dominant in the film. Most of the noise tends to be forest related sounds, so leaves, trees, wind, water, crunching leaves and twigs under your feet, that kind of stuff. The bear, it sounds like a bear, so <laughs> of course you can't really rate it high or low based on that because it was a real trained bear. And for the music, I think that's where my score really hinges because I really liked the soundtrack of the film. I think it was great. And as I said earlier, it wasn't just the soundtrack, it was sometimes the lack of a soundtrack. And for me, as ironic as that might sound, a lack of sound increasing the score of sound, that is the way it works for me. Because sometimes, knowing when not to use music is just as valuable as when to use music. So I am giving it an 8 overall for that. And as far as the rewatchability goes, well, as I said earlier, the story doesn't lend itself towards being the kind of movie which you'll stuff popcorn in your face and watch it every Saturday. It's just not that kind of film. It's got more weight to it because of the fact that it actually happened to someone, at least the essence of the film, and doubtless it's happened to people in other situations as well. It's a very believable story. But that just doesn't lend itself toward rewatchability. And even if that does have rewatchability for you personally, the pacing, again, is just a little bit too slow. It's certainly not the kind of movie which I put on at a group gathering or at a party because people will get bored. But as a tabulation of all five of our categories put together, I'm giving Blackfoot Trail or Backwoods or Blackwoods or The Great Bear Adventure or whatever people want to call this movie this week, a 3.2 out of 5, which is a pretty decent score overall, considering the things that I didn't like as much. That's still a very decent score, and it could have easily been even higher were those things tightened up a little bit. But I would definitely recommend the movie to those who are into animal attack films, creature feature films, and also horror films and thrillers which have more of a realistic edge and are even based on real events. But that's it overall for this particular pick. I'll see you guys next time. And as always, thanks for watching.